deal with it. Okay. All right. So, um, Keska say un bolus de protein. Okay. Um, let me do this. Like, you know, when, when a nurse is preparing a shot and they're pulling it into the, and they might have to stick it in two different things and pull more stuff into the shot. I know that's called bolusing uh, the medicine. Right. Okay. So, so it's a medical term. It's a nursing term is what you're saying. Uh, um, plural. Uh, 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 um, no, geez, that's not it. Bolus I. Steve, you can, um, you're making me do a lot today. Baby. Come on, Anna. Help a brother out. <laughs> Help a brother out. I'm trying to I'm trying to choose a bunch of obscure songs on YouTube. Bolus, a small rounded mass of a substance, especially of chewed food at the moment of swallowing. Gross. Okay. All right, a so type of large pill used in veterinary medicine. Medicine, a single dose of a drug or other medicinal preparation given all at once. Right. So you see, they, they, they Bolus. these guys, these YouTube guys want to sound like they know what the fuck they're talking about. Please so, tell me it's baggies of chewed food. Dude, I, I, I masticated in a bag. Yeah, I get a bolus of protein. You got to go listen to these. You ever want to laugh your ass off? And it's not like I find it funny because I'm a nerd, but <clears throat> there's a problem with all of it because people will listen to this stuff. And yeah. then they'll go, well, should I be doing that? Why? Maybe uh, Vinny, Vinny's kind of old. Maybe he doesn't know this new stuff. No, folks, Vinny knows everything. Unfortunately, I've been in this business <laughs> for fucking 40 years. I've been in the gym for 50. I know everything. But the problem is, is that people are going to do it in the chat groups and the Reddit and the subreddits. And then they're going to go in a clubhouse and they're going to be like, yeah, bro prepare a bolus of protein with some aspartame. And that's yeah. how you're going to curb your cravings. Look, By I, the way, that's that's a real thing. I heard someone say aspartame on Clubhouse and he's a keto coach. So really? Yeah. Um, yeah, let, let's take our friend, our new best friend, uh, uh, Tim Malian. I almost said Scott Malian. I almost did it. You know, the, the, I, listen, I, you're going to have a rebellion on your hands. So the other day, Tim takes to Twitter. starts saying, hey, I, I stopped losing weight for a couple of days. I, I'm thinking about intermittent fasting. Right. And I'm like, I saw that. Yeah. No, 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 no. You, let, let, You're let, the stallion let, for a reason, Tim. Let me explain to you how life works, Anna. OK, please do. Oh, my God. This is the moment I've been waiting for. It's taken you 11 years, but now this is it. Go. I tell everybody. I know. You have to dance with the date you brought to the prom if you have any chance of getting laid. That's a fact of life. Right. You bring a girl to the prom, you start dancing with all the other chicks, any chance of getting laid out the door. Period. It's just the way life, I know, oh man, Vinny, you shouldn't be talking about getting, fuck you. I don't care today. I'm having a rough day. You know, a lot of time about getting laid. I don't know. And maybe somebody will get upset. Everybody's upset right now. Every everybody's on the edge. It is an edgy time. It's a very edgy time. So our nerves have been frayed. I, listen, my nerves are just fine. The bottom line is, you can't. You you, you got to keep dancing with the one you brought, right? Tim, you, you stop losing weight for a day or two. It doesn't mean. And by the way, this is coming out in three weeks. We're three weeks ahead on this podcast. He, yeah, he's probably way past this now. He is because he's back on track already. Yeah, you know, he is. Doing, and he was on Clubhouse this week and is doing amazingly well. Right. But that's what people do. A lot of these phone calls I get, they'll go, Vinny, um, uh, you know, Jason Fung says I need to intermittent fast if I have any chance. And I'll go, well, that's not true. And they'll go. Well, wait a minute. You had him on your podcast. Yeah. But you, you don't like Jason Fung? No, I didn't say that. By the way, folks, Jason Fung did not create fasting. Right. And I'm not against fasting. People of you look fasting. If you're metabolically broken and you have someone like Jason Fung, who's willing to teach you how to do it correctly and do a medical fast, knock yourself out. It works, but it's not the only thing that works. 
if you cut out the macronutrient carbohydrates, same results, except you don't have to stop eating. Same results. The other problem, I, I was talking to this woman, let's call her Marie, because that was her name. Her name was Marie, talking to her today. And she was asking me about Jason Fung and fasting and the whole thing. And I was like, yeah, I said, look, you know, nothing wrong with it. But here's what happens to a lot of people. They start using fasting as more diet trickery. Yep. Right. And it, it becomes a problem. You know, people say to me all the time, like they'll say, um, the other day on the phone, guy says, what have you eaten so far today? I don't know why it matters what I'm eating, because we we're talking about him. But I said, right. it was about 11 o'clock my time. I said, I haven't eaten yet. He goes, so you, you're IF. What do you mean? You're intermittent fasting. I said, no, I know what IF means. But what do you mean? He goes, but you haven't eaten yet. What time? He goes, so you're telling me that's not good, but you're doing it. I said, no, here's what happened. Um, I woke up. There was a ton of stuff I had to get done on the computer that I wasn't prepared for or to do. Andy called me with a list of things. I had to do all of that. And then I started phone calls. And when I start phone calls, I start walking. Therefore, I haven't eaten yet. But since I'm fat adapted, no problem. Is this something I regularly do? No, it was just something I did that day. Right. And as a matter of fact, when I got off the phone, I ate a pound of hamburger meat, rested it for a minute, came back in my office and worked. And then I went out and worked out, went to the gym, worked out for a while. That's what I did. But does that mean, you know, you want to say, oh, Vinny eats inside of a six hour window because he ate again at six o'clock that evening and that was it? No, I probably ate at eight o'clock that evening. And then I went to bed and the next morning I woke up and had a shit ton of eggs. So, is not anything I would normally do. Does it happen from time to time? Yes. If I miss any meal, it's usually the midday meal. Right? It's just the way it works. Because busy. So, yeah. I, I, I get busy just like everyone else. So. Um, it happens to me quite a bit, and I don't want to, but it happens, and I didn't wind up eating till later, but also because... I do so much speaking. You know how it is, Vinny. You can't like stop and like eat. And then you have all this food in your mouth and you got crunchity crunchities. Yeah. You, you it gotta, sounds gross. You got to swish your mouth out pretty good before you do a voiceover and all that kind of stuff. You can't yeah. have stuff flying around your mouth. Schmooky schmooks. Yeah. You, yeah. You got to get it all cleaned out. You know, so. But, but I, I agree. I, uh, yeah, it's always on accident. Not that I haven't messed with IF, but. For me personally, I think that it was not great for an already stressful situation. I do better when I have something in the morning. Look, I mean, some stress. people do it and it's <laughs> fine. But yeah. if you start using that as diet trickery, you're going down a bad path, a really bad path. And it, it just doesn't turn around. It doesn't work out the way you want it to. So keep that in mind. That's all I'm going to tell you on, on that. Um, well, you know, I think, too, it's the idea of like what you said about dancing with the date you brought. It's like, well, if I did NSNG for the past couple months and it's worked this well, imagine if I also just, you know, starved myself a little bit. And I'm sorry, but sometimes when you're using fasting for diet trickery, it's equivalent to you doing a little bit of starvation exercises. Yeah. Let's be honest, yeah. as opposed to saying I'm entering into a fast, it's you know what I mean? I'm doing this intentionally. It, there are some things that will be uncomfortable about it, but I'm doing, you know what I mean? And, and it's like, I, I know that feeling. I've tried to do that game of like, I, you know what, if I do this and it works, I could just do it extra if I do both of these things. And then you wind up either, I don't know. Well, you know, Anna, binging or saying it doesn't, it's not working fast enough or being upset. Cause like, I don't want to have to never eat again. You know what I mean? Right. No, and, eat, eating's a good thing. And and by yeah. the way, you know, I'm not poo-pooing fasting. Like a lot of people have, I don't know how this works. I've actually seen a documentary on this. They've cured cancer through. Oh yeah. I saw that one where the, the people do the medical fast for like 28 yeah. days. And oh, it's yeah, incredible. They, yeah. Absolutely. They, they go to this, this clinic and the whole thing. And, and there's a lot of good stuff with fasting and the, the autophagy and all that with that. It's all good. I'm talking about when people start using it as diet trickery. Diet trigger. Exactly. It, it and just, that's, 
you know, you're going down a bad road. And that, that was the problem Marie had today. Um, you know, she the, the problem with Maria, she's really smart. I think she said she was an attorney, which means she's not that smart. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it's these people start outsmarting themselves. Yeah. Smart people usually outsmart themselves. Well, that's and true. Analysis the, paralysis. The words I said to her is we're never more brilliant than when we're justifying our own bad behavior. Oh, think about that statement. Yeah, for sure. Then I must be pretty brilliant. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, um, well, the reason why I want to bring it up is because we do automatically go to the fasting thing and it's a big discussion in the groups and people are helping each other out with it. And it is, it does happen. So I, I understand why people come to it and you're right. You don't want to demonize it. There's no need to do that. It's, it's that feeling of, like you said, are you using it for diet trickery? Are you doing that thing? I'm, I'm telling you where you go, well, if NSNG is working, but it stopped for a couple of days, maybe I need to do something more to really kick it in. And um, generally that's the precursor to like, well, if I just diet more and you're still in the diet mentality, you can, that's how you can tell the difference, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, um, and it's not a good place to be. So, so if, if, okay. So then would something like, doing more movement, or I know we're going to be talking about weightlifting because I know that you say, and I agree, exercise is a very poor way to lose weight, but exercise is the fountain of youth. Yeah. Which I get. In fact, um, I just did a little video on that earlier today. If you don't believe me, like I probably still have it in my phone. Let me play the video. Play it on your phone. Yeah. Because while you're probably, looking for that, it's probably come up already. Um, on my Instagram, by the yeah. way, I've been doing the Instagram reels. Some of them are getting 24, 25. I know. Cause out. that's, I I've been telling you. And so has Megan for years do reels. Yeah. And you by the way, do they're, reels. they're getting more play than the number of people I have on my Instagram, which is yeah, off because they show if the, if the reel is popular and people comment and click like, then Instagram will show it to people who don't follow you in, in, in their feeds and okay, maybe so follow similar hashtags. Did you find I, it? If you think I'm kidding, um, this is uh, today. Uh, I, I would show it in my camera, but whenever I hold something up, it does that. So I'll just, just hold play it up. the audio. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here it is on the mic. Well, last consult was just with a guy who was thanking me because he lost 85 pounds and he did it without any exercise. And I said, great. Now you need to start exercising. <laughs> said, well, why? I've already lost the weight. The truth of the matter is you can lose all the weight you want without exercising. The problem is exercise is the fountain of youth. Don't ever forget that. Okay. Stay motivated. Okay. Love it. If you think I'm making this stuff up as I go, I was just talking to a guy about this on the consult. Well, what know? did I just quote back to you before yeah. you played that? It's, it's, Someone's it's, listening and it's me. Someone's paying attention. Well, here's my question for you. Go on. You're not going to like this, but you might like it. I don't know. I love probably you like it. You're probably into it. You Everybody like it. always tells me you're not going to like this. And I'm like, well, because I know that you say exercise is a poor way to lose weight, but I feel like I need to exercise to maintain my weight. Like I, when I don't, first of all, I know my body and I need to exercise for my mental health, my sanity. So I know I'm never going to go like so long. I, I will never go. I walk five to eight miles a day without question up and down hills. That's what I do. The weightlifting part is what needs tweakage. You know what I mean? Did so you say, that, wait, hang on. did you say tweakage? Tweakage. 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 All right, Anna, wait, I got to play this for you. You ready? Yeah. What's this stuff? Some cereal. It's probably good for you. Do you try it? I'm not going to try it. You try it. I'm not going to try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. When you bring life home, don't tell the kids it's... That's what I felt like when you said, I hate everything. He, he won't eat it. He hates everything. Did I say I hate everything? You said I hate everything. Oh, you hate everything. 
<clears throat> anyway, I didn't mean to bring the show down. I know, I know what you're saying. <laughs> and I and 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 I believe I I believe you because I have witnessed you getting weight off of so many people off over the years. Right. And yet exercise weightlifting feels necessary to if you want to take it to the next level. Does that make sense? Am I even like am I totally so, off base on this? When I walk on stage at KetoCon before this podcast comes out, because this is coming out after. Right. The, yeah. right. So um, when I walk on stage, probably the first words out of my mouth will be exercise is a poor way to lose weight. Because that's a fact. The fact of the matter is, you cannot eat a bad diet. And try to chase it down by running or exercising or riding a bike or doing anything. People always, you know, we have the, these misconceptions. Oh, look at those guys in the Tour de France, man. Those guys are read thin. They can eat whatever they want because they're on a bike six or seven hours a day. Oh, no, no. Those guys are eating. Do you know what they serve them at night? Everybody thinks they do big pasta feeds at night. And yeah, they have a lot of uh, carbohydrates and would have whatever in that race. They're all eating red meat. They're eating red they're meat. They're blood doping. Yeah. Red it, meat. Yeah. It's, it's the cheap blood dope. So it, like what you're saying is we have this preconceived notion about the calorie bank. Well, if I do an extra half hour on the treadmill, then I can have that 150 calorie thing, which even though we're not counting calories and even the folks like myself who aren't, we're way past the counting phase. Right. There's still that idea of if I go this extra thing, I can do the thing. But what, what I'm talking about is exercise is a poor way to lose weight if you don't change your diet. But for me, I've changed my diet and I also need to be lifting weights to notice, you know what I mean? The tightening, the, the, the body but, composition. You know, it, it goes to what I just shape. said. You know it what I'm saying? To what I just said to this guy earlier today. It's the fountain of youth, right? You can lose weight and still have a saggy ass and still have droopy this and, you know, you know, bat arms and the whole thing, you know, bat wing. Right. Exercise is going to help all of that, not to mention, and I tell this to people all the time, if you're doing everything right, if you're low carb, if you're high protein, high fat, and you start exercising, now you will magnify the effects of weight loss. That's what that's what I want to hear. Well, you just heard it. Should I say it again? I, yes. Louder for the people in the back. Okay, for you guys who weren't really paying attention because you were flipping someone off in traffic <laughs> or some dude was staring you down on a train you're on while you're trying to get to work or wherever you were. Look at Anna sucking on my nuts. Yeah. Ultra fat folks, go check it out. Do you just bring that in for, you know, so I can run my own ad or. No, I just I was eating this. right. I'm allowing myself one every other day during my carnivore challenge. It's not a carnivore. I'm doing a just really just super low, low carb. Low carb. Yeah. 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 I probably have two of those every day. And if I'm out exercising, I have way more than that. You know, if I'm on a mountain, I look forward to this like it's manna from the gods. Uh, it, By the way, did you know that manna is actually insect poop? Um, which is an SNG. Go ahead once more louder for the kids in the back. And I'm okay. going to suck on the rest of this ultra fat. Exercise is a poor way to lose weight. But if you're doing everything right, if you're cutting carbs down to a minimum, you're eating a good high protein, high fat diet, and you're exercising, you will magnify the effects of weight loss. Now, which is better? Aerobics or weights? Well, it's hard to tell because it's not a calorie in calorie out thing. I find the camp, the combination thereof. If you're doing some light weights, you're doing some anaerobic exercise, working that anaerobic engine, if you will, building that up, causing some, some lean muscle mass to curve. Now you're putting on muscle where you used to have mostly fat. Muscle does not turn to fat and fat does not turn to muscle, but you're now replacing where fat used to be with the muscles you're building. Those two, I used to, oh, let me write that down. <laughs> kid, when I was a kid, I'll get to this next. Um, okay. So <clears throat> what happens is, um, you know, you, you start doing the anaerobics, the weights, 
anaerobics means without oxygen, weightlifting and what have you. Uh, sprinting is also in that category. Uh, and you start doing some aerobics. And this doesn't mean going to an aerobic class and some woman telling you to feel the burn. It doesn't mean you have to go take a, a Peloton class or buy expensive equipment. You could walk outside. Like what I do. Yeah. Up and um, down the hills. Uh, you, look, today I just noticed I, I actually did some aerobics today, but I did a lot of yard work and I had a couple of phone calls. I just looked at my watch. I'm at 25,000 steps today. That's amazing. And that's not even counting when I did my aerobics because I, I didn't have the watch on for that. I, I, I was on the spinner, right? So I'm not asking you to be me. This is what I do for a living. I had a lot of yard work to do and I had a lot of people to talk to. So yeah. I've done a lot of work. As a matter of fact, I was feeling a little tired before this podcast. And I was like, wow, why am I so tired? Because today was my day off of weights. You know, I take a day off of weights every now and then. I still did my aerobics. I did a shit ton of yard work. And I walked enough to walk 25,000 steps. And I think they say every 10,000 steps is what, five miles? Yeah, about. So I've walked maybe 12 and a half miles on top of that. And it's hot here. Yeah, I should be, it is hot. I should be a bit tired. I get less, I get fewer miles because I usually walk three times a day and yeah. I definitely get fewer steps in the summer because it's in the midday, obviously. But I, ma I make up for it. I make up for it. But look, you know, I mean, for me, it's, I walked for an hour and then I had an hour off and I was doing some, I did a little yard work and I did another hour and had a little time off. So, you know, it, it wasn't like Split all that up. Month, right? Yeah, yeah. And so when you look down and you go, wow, 25,000 steps. And that didn't even count my aerobic activity. Um, so, but I don't count in this equation. I've been doing this my whole life. I was a professional athlete for some of it, uh, in, in bicycle racing and aerobics. And I played D one football guys like me don't count right in the equation. You just do it. It's just part of my life. It's like I said, it's like brushing my teeth, wiping my ass. I'm going to move every day and that's it. Um, but yeah, doing the exercise really, really helps. It really does. So, Dr. Ben Bocchicchio, is that how you say his name? Ben Bocchicchio, yeah. Ben Bocchicchio, Ben B. Yeah, he calls He, ben he likes doing his 15 minute to failure twice a week. What do you think about that? I, I think it's excellent. Uh, Cody Cod, who's built really well, built like a Sherman tank. He does the Ben B? No, he well, he does Fred Hahn, who came up on this podcast probably last week or the week before on Friday, another great trainer like Dr. Ben Bocchio. Um, He works with Fred Hahn in New York. I had Fred on the show. And I wanted someone else to explain their method of going to failure because going to failure in one set works. I think uh, Ben says 15 to 20 minutes, he can have you puking and walking out of the gym. <laughs> wobbly need. Um, I think Fred Hahn takes somewhere about 20, 25 minutes with people and put them through the paces, but both are, you know, twice a week to failure. Yeah. That on, on anaerobics that works. Now you want to be a bodybuilder. No, that doesn't work. That's right. a whole different thing. I don't think uh, there's a lot of bodybuilders in the audience. But no, you, you never know. Some people go, no, I, I heard this guy and he says you need to go every year, twice a week on each muscle group. Yes. If you want to be a bodybuilder, you, you know, or if you, if you're well, a gay if you guy, want to be a bodybuilder, like, you should book a session with Vinny. If you're a gay guy that wants to live in West Hollywood and look like a gay guy in West Hollywood, by the way, folks, those people are ripped out like they spend their lives. Let me put it this way. We are on the beach in East, East Hampton three years ago. Yeah. Uh, and Two Mile Hollow Beach is the beach. They call it Two Mile Swallow Beach. It's the gay beach. Yeah. And um, Lauren would not dare to take his shirt off. <laughs> He's like, nope, not going to do it. it. Yeah, it's scary with those <laughs> These dudes yeah. are hot. Yeah, and Lauren's brother is one of them. Yes. And Lauren's brother's husband is a smoke show. Yeah. That doesn't make me gay, does it? Not that there's anything. No. Um, Here, I'm, I'm going to show you a picture of Justin. And, that I and took by the way, by the way, I'm taking a picture. And it's just the, like, wait, hang on. Ridiculous. By the way, your husband's a good looking guy. And he wouldn't yeah. take shirt off around uh, like on Swallow Beach because yeah, these guys. See, here's Justin. Yeah. From a couple weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. And he just looks like that all the time. I know he works out. He runs. He, that, he eats low carb. 
everything is about their body and looking a certain way, period. Yeah. It's it's crazy what those guys are able to uh, accomplish. And then Lauren's like, I'm not, I'm not taking off my shirt yeah. from these guys. Yeah, screw those guys. Yeah. Um, at any rate. Uh, yes. If you want to be ripped is what you're saying. A whole yes. different kind of workout, right? And yeah, you, folks, if you want to have that kind of body, call me. A lot of people do. A lot of guys say, hey, look, I want to look like this. And they'll yeah, I'll, they'll tell me celebrity. I, I want to look more like a Jason Statham type. Or I want to look. And by the way, Jason Statham was, I don't know if you know this about him. He was. I don't know anything a, about him. He was an A number one athlete. Um, I think oh. he and Vinnie Jones were friends back in the day. Um, actor, you know, soccer player. And I think I want to say that Jason Statham was a diver. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not making this up. I, I might be making this up and look it up, put in Jason Statham diver and see if that comes. I, I think he was a like on the circuit, like the big time circuit diving when he was a kid. So, yeah, there he is in front of the pool in a speedo. OK, and so you see what he karate looked like. too, Chinese martial arts, kickboxing and karate. Was he friends with Vinnie Jones or am I making that part up? Put in Statham Vinny and see what comes up. I, I got to know. I, I need to know if I'm making that up or not. Why do I know so much? Does it matter? Maybe I maybe I belong to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> with the other two, guy. two mile swallow. You know what? I am pretty, pretty fit for an old guy. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. you could get it. You could get it. You'd be the daddy of the beach, but you would get oh, it. Oh, yeah. They would call me the silverback. Yeah. <laughs> silverback beach daddy. Yeah. I would Hell be yeah. Daddy in the gay community. <laughs> yep. I silverback Ooh. beach daddy coming at you two mile swallow. Hey, the gays always think I'm gay. That's, you know, well, That's it didn't help because I used to go to the, the gay bar with Andy. You know, what's so oh. funny about that is that guys used to be so offended by that. And I'm like, it's a compliment. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, every time someone says, are you gay? It means you're hot. So. Like, no, but thanks. You know, because yeah. anyone's ever been to West Hollywood, those guys are damn smoke shows. Yeah. Um, anyway. I can't believe I'm Googling Jason Statham. Statham. Vinny Jones. Vinny Jones. See, I, I know. To- isn't it pronounced Statham? Is it? No, Statham. Like how you say Chatham? No, it's Statham. Right. At least that's the way I pronounce it. <laughs> Reunited Vinnie Jones and Jason Statham for their acting debuts. Great. OK, okay, okay. they're friends. They grew up together. And it, also, it, OK, how do I know that? I don't know, because you're obviously gay for Jason Statham or Vinnie or Jones. Statham. <laughs> Jason Statham. Actually, I'm, I'm hot for Vinnie Jones. <laughs> He's a good looking guy. I have guy. a story about him. Do you really? Yeah, I have to tell it off the air. Yeah, all right. <laughs> people. Oh, by the way, Anna, people always ask me that they go. Because I forget what we say because we never talk about it off the air. They'll go, that time that Anna said she needs to tell you about Vinnie Jones off the air. What was oh, that? They do. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll mix that into the phone call. I can't that's say it. it on the air. Yeah. No, don't say it. and don't put it up. We that's the other thing. We used to put up notes to each other on the camera. And now we I know. Now we can't do that because remember how I screwed it up? <laughs> yeah, you did that one time. <laughs> Bill had to edit it out. Oh, geez. I think um someone was saying, what was that thing you were saying about? Kristen the other day, I'm like, oh, shit, was I talking about Kristen? I don't need to be in her bad graces. She's got you didn't say anything. No, I didn't. I thought no. about this. you said you would tell Anna off the air. I went, yeah, there's a reason for that. I'm not going to go tell you. <laughs> it, it is fun when you have the dirt. Yeah, yeah. Um, whenever you're um, you're adjacent to famous people, it's always fun. So we've always lived in that. That little yeah crease of the world, and um, today, so yeah okay that that's good we did it we did the weightlifting thing okay, I just so wanted today, to like today is one day one eighty of the year of course this is coming out probably in twenty days that's right we're halfway through the year yeah we have one hundred eighty five days left and my we're aerobics, in a wormhole my aerobics hour is at two hundred and fifteen that's awesome so i i have to have 365 by the end of the year now you're gonna uh, get there w- when we're doing this i'm gonna be traveling right I'm yeah gonna- so you're gonna have to like do hotel runarounds and whatnot and it's gonna be yeah. hot they, as they have balls treadmills. They, usually going. have they usually have a rowing machine a treadmill stair machines man years ago they barely had anything but i think people demand this stuff now yeah and look i don't stay in hardy toity hotels i stay in middle of the road 
hotels. Yeah. Just something where my back won't be hurting in the morning. Hotels. And um, they all have something that's useful, right? And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have my running shoes. I might have to walk out the front door of a hotel in Memphis or somewhere and go for a jog or something. Right. Right. Right into a brick of humidity. Oh, Memphis I'm, is one of the most humid places I've ever been. And I, I've lived, and I lived in Atlanta here. for and I grew up in Virginia. I know humidity. And Memphis and, was like, oh, you guys. And, OK, wait. The Mississippi River is crazy humid. The, you see this bottle? Yeah. What you got in there? Uh, it's 40 ounces, right? It's a clean canteen. It's been filled probably four times today. It's filled again. And each time I fill it, I've been putting anywhere from two to three of my ultra salts in here with it. Just, so you don't take those as capsules. You just put it, you douse it in the water. Well, what I do is uh, I, I have soda water. I make the, the soda stream. And oh, when yeah. That in, it fizzes and you know, because it's gas. Oh, water. that's fun. And if it, and it stays like an effervescent, salty water, like a, a brine. And I, I've this is probably my fourth one today. I'm soaking down. Like drinking sea foam. Yeah. Serena always goes, she'll drink some. She'll go, ugh. It was your, it was your seawater, she calls it. <laughs> I think she's she means the, the C word, but who knows? Because they, well, she would actually say the word because she's British. Over there, they don't have the same. It's not laden culturally with the bad definition that it is here. Over there, they're like, "C word this, C word that." You're a right C word, and you're, they're like, "Ha ha ha, chum." Oh, <laughs> it's like every like if they get a paper cut, it's like, "Oh, cunt," you yeah. know, or bollocks. That's the two yeah. words. They every, don't. Every single person, that's what they do there. Here, you say that word, and it's like some Karen is going to emerge from the bleachers and start yelling at you again. If we had a television show that was all that footage of Karen's freaking out in public, I would be glued to that shit. Wait a minute. I love watching it. Let me get Pardini on the line and see what I can figure out. I'm telling you that should be Ke Kevin's and Karen's. Yeah. You know what? Uh, apologies. Anyone actually named Kevin and Karen, but no, I'm not apologizing it's to him. You're riveting kind of, television. Right, here's the thing. Hey, Netflix, I have an idea. Karen's. Karen. Dun dun, Karen's. And you know what? Starring, starring, uh, what's her name? Um, she's in everything now. She's in Hacks. What, what's her name? Jean Smart. Jean Smart, starring Jean Smart. I'll get her to, to host it. And we, you know, she just shows videos and she she's just know. in the thing like uh like what's his name Stossel does like at 60 minutes or dateline right, or right. whatever and she's just like today's karen and, and was we'll, at a walmart in poughkeepsie and here's the thing we say gene um here's the deal no script you're gonna watch the video in real time and it's and just whatever, just talk some shit. You want, yeah just talk I, I i find her to be one of the funniest and most she's brilliant. amazing yeah and by the way, she's been around for a thousand years. I'm, I'm glad designing she's designing women. Yeah. Hello. Oh, I didn't realize she was. I never saw that. Yeah, show. she was the she was the ditzy. Oh, no, she wasn't. The, was she the secretary? She was on designing I women. I saw the show. Her, Annie Potts, Dixie Carter. And who was the the Delta Burke, which, by the way, we trick or treated at Delta Burke's house. You know, she married married. What's his name? Is it Gerald McCraney? Is that who she married? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I they lived that. in Studio yeah. City. And so every year we go trick or treating down in Studio City because you get the better candy there. And um, when Lucy was little, <laughs> how did we know it was Delta Burke's house? Because the, her, the assistant opens the front door and there are two gigantic painting portraits of Delta Burke in the house, right in the, in the thing, right in the thing, like where you could just you walk in that house. You're like, she's like, I am home and I am with my pictures. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is Delta Burke's house. And then my friends like, yeah, that's Delta and Gerald's house. I was like, oh. Delta Burke. I just love her. I just love her so much for having two giant portraits of herself right when you walk in her house. Just the, just the balls. You know what I mean? Just the just the the soupçons of self-confidence to do that is beyond. She now looked, what she's like to live with or deal with. Who knows? But I mean, she might be the sweetest woman in the world. We don't know. Do you know who Karen Baldwin is? Um, yes, be only because I believe. Wait. Hold on. I believe that we've talked about her. 
pull up Karen Baldwin. Pull up a. I want you to pull up a picture. Tell me. Oh, she, Miss Universe. Yeah. Yeah. She and Serena are best friends, and really, they were real estate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I, that's how I know her. She's Serena's friend. Yeah. Yeah, and um, they they sold real estate together. I've always thought that Delta Burke and Karen Baldwin were yes. separated at birth. Well, they have that black Irish, gorgeous, pale ivory skin with the deep piercing eyes and the dark hair. Yeah, so but the, the difference is Karen Baldwin is Karen's my age. But what, what do they have Karen for age? I think she's my age. Oh, I don't know. Uh, and she, she also sounds like she was smart. She got out of entertainment and started yeah, doing she, real estate. She did, and she's still a smoke show. That's Karen awesome. is still In 63. She was born. OK, so she's a year younger than me. And uh, she is still a smoke show. Um, she was married to a guy who um, everyone says we used to look alike. Oh, that's and, funny. And even Karen and Karen's daughters, who this is their father, um, say, I can't remember his name right now. See, see who she was. Married Howard. To. No, no. She was married to an actor who was a big deal back in the 80s. And then he just kind of went away. Um, I would have to look Jack at Scalia. Yeah, Jack, everyone always says, oh, yeah, I, I can see Jack that. Clear. Uh, and she says, it's not so much the looks, it's the mannerisms, the words that come out of your mouth. And um, she she's always said, yeah, you and Jack are the same guy. Um, but yeah, Karen, Karen and Delta Burke separated at birth. But I think I think Delta Burke is older and she's lost it now. She might be. Yeah. I mean, listen. Delta Burke's an icon. She's allowed to get old and lose it. Yeah, but so Gene Smart was on that show, huh? Yes. You see, I just passed the I'm not gay test. I had no idea. That's true. I'm really proud of you. Can you name uh, the lead characters in Steel Magnolias? Probably not. All right. You're not gay. All right, hang on. Can I try? Yeah, you can try. Okay. You don't even have to name the actresses in the movie. You can just name their character names. No, I, uh, that's impossible. Um, so I'll just, I, I'm sure Dolly Parton had to be on that movie. Yes, yes. I got one right? Yeah. Okay, well, let's see if Dolly was in that movie. Her, she was Truvy, the hairdresser. Okay, so wait, if Dolly was in that, I want to take a big stab here because she used to do shit with Jane Fonda. No Jane Fonda. No. Yeah. Mm. Um, Steel Magnolia. So Magnolia has got to be Southern. <laughs> Another movie. It actually takes place in in uh, Chincapin Parish in Louisiana. I feel okay. like you should know this. Okay, I'm gonna go back. You ready? Okay. Did I mention Do Dolly Parton yet? You did. You did. Oh, 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 oh! I got one. I got one. I got one. Jessica Tandy <laughs> in that movie. I feel like that is a really solid guess, but no, she's driving Miss Daisy, another Southern iconic. Yeah, movie. I got the wrong wrong Southern <laughs> yeah. movie. Okay. Give me one more try. Louisiana boy doesn't even know Steel Magnolias. How Which, by I... the way, none of them had Louisiana accents, just so you know. Wait, they all... what, year, what year around did that come out? Oh, gosh, 80, yeah, 88, 89. OK, who was 87 high... somewhere in there? Let me oh, look it up. OK, OK, look it up, look it up. But she, um... she could arguably be one of the biggest stars of the past 30 years. It made her debut in this movie. Made her debut in this mm -hmm. movie. Well, not debut, but like lead role debut. OK, was Lily Tomlin in it? No, because she was always with. Was, oh, 89. It came out. OK, 89. I was living in New Orleans. <laughs> Whoa. Someone had their acting debut in this movie. Not act, but like lead role debut. Like became. The, she was in a couple of other things, but this was like. OK. Um, am I going to kick? Go, just go ahead. And tell You're going to kick yourself. Who was in that movie? Dolly Parton. Julia Roberts was who I was referring to was her big lead role debut. Mm -hmm. Sally Field played her mother. Um, Daryl Hannah was the hairdresser's assistant. Olympia Dukakis and Shirley MacLaine. Quite a cast. Yeah, I, but I wouldn't, uh, uh, you I wouldn't. You wouldn't. You didn't get it, but you could see why the gay community. Right, gets right, it. right, right, yeah. right. It's, it's an amazing I, ensemble cast. It was a play and then they made it into a movie. I would. Um, I. I don't know. I just said Dolly Parton because Steel Magnolia. I went, it's got to be somewhere in the South. I had no idea it was even set in Louisiana. And also Dolly Parton is famously quoted in an interview about that movie where people were like, you know, they were filming in Louisiana in the summer. It was hot as balls. 
and she would never complain. She was just always like, I am so happy to be here. I can't believe I have this opportunity. I would yeah. never complain. Are you kidding me? Well, that's, you know, that's the way she is. She's yeah. not a diva, even though she's the world's biggest diva. She has no diva traits. No and, diva traits. Uh, yeah. None, none at all. Yeah. No, she's, um, she, and by the way, speaking of someone who's kept it together, you know, she stays in shape. She's oh not God. a very tall woman, you know, she's, no, she's very little. She's a tiny woman um, and has kept herself in incredible shape. And she's got to be in her 70s. I saw her a few years ago at the Hollywood Bowl, and I she can run circles around pretty much all of us with her energy. And she yeah. looks fabulous. No, I get that. Uh, when I was a kid, um, Jolene was like the first song I remember that she came out with. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, love me some uh, Dolly Parton. I think everybody people like her now, right? Oh, I don't I, I think she's the only good human left. Like everybody loves Dolly Part. I don't think there's anything. So no, no, I don't one, think we have anything to cancel her for. Yeah, I was about to say no one's canceling Dolly, right? No, I, I think she's cancel proof. She's basically a national treasure. She is a national treasure. Yeah. Yeah. And anybody who says otherwise will fight you. No, look, I've always loved her. And, and you know, the woman, uh, that song that, that was made famous by, uh, what's her name, who died? Um, oh, the I Will Always Love You, Whitney Houston yeah. remake? Whitney yeah. Houston, yeah, that's, um, people said, you know, do you, do you hate that she, you know, she redid the song and it was more popular she's than the, your version? She's like, no, I made all the oh, money. I, I get paid. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so she's got it together. Um, so Speaking uh, of getting paid. Yeah. Villa Capelli. I believe is back in stock by now. Go figure. So here's the deal. It was sitting in customs for forever. Mm -hmm. Hopefully now, three weeks after this podcast comes out, it's gone through customs and is now at the fulfillment warehouse. I know he put some dented um, damaged tins up for sale, but those sold out within 30 minutes. So if the oil is back in the fulfillment center and you put your email address in the notify me when this is available, you should be notified. If you have right. not, go to villacapelli.com and look right now and see if it's available. Because if you don't get it, it will sell out. It is the best olive oil on the planet. Absolutely incredible. And um, you need it. Use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. You'll get 10% off your order. And if your order's over, I believe it's $99. Maybe it's $99.50. I'm not sure. Put it over $100. Use the discount code Vinny so it's still over $100. And then you'll get free shipping, which is important yeah. because it's heavy to ship. Yeah, it that's is, big time savings. <clears throat> the best olive oil on the planet. You have to have it. Vinny uses it in his vitamin D product. I use it in all of my sauces. And uh, there's going to come a day when it's just, I'm not going to be able to use it because we're making so many sauces. And that's going to really bum me out because it is really high quality, yeah. small batch production. Well, we're and still using it in my vitamin D and uh, because it's so little, you know, the amount. Yeah, used. yeah exactly. And I, can I tell you, and I don't mean this to sound like an ad. For you, but it may. Um, since Serena's been gone, of course she's yeah. back now, but I'm gone. Since you've been gone, your your barbecue dust. Yeah. Oh, I need to send you some more. Has saved my life, and, and, and in a weird way, because it when you like the other night, and I don't think we put this video up yet, but the other night I did, I got like a 14 ounce fillet. Yeah. And as you know, the filet, there's no fat around the edges. You eat a filet, the whole thing vanishes. You eat every bit of it, right? And I did the thing where I didn't just put the the put it on the top and the bottom. I put it all around the sides, too. And it was one of those big, thick filets, and I cooked it on both edges first. I, I got that, you know, with your powder and some extra salt. I always add salt to it. Right. I did that on both ends and then the top and the bottom. It was, you know, I, I did a quick sear, psh, psh, you know, both sides, both ends, and then I let it rest for 20 minutes. I, I'm pretty sure it was the best filet I've ever eaten. And I've oh, eaten that. that makes me happy. It was so tender. And the, 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 whatever that, and I don't know why you call it a barbecue sauce. You should just call it a barbecue pot. It's just a meat powder. 
It is a meat powder. It, it, I call it a barbecue dust because I originally developed it with the idea of whether it's the flame from the grill or the heat from the pan, there's something about it that it works some chemistry magic. The heat makes it go with the meat so well. It's so good. I'm so, I'm so, so glad you're enjoying it. And by the way, let me just give one more grill pro tip trick using the dill. Mm -hmm. um, I have been doing this. I can't stop doing this because I got a bunch of salmon from my CSA this month. And I have like the big, it, it still has the fins on there. So you eat the fin meat too. So yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Um, they didn't like totally butcher it off, you know, into, into very, what is it called? Antiseptic fillets. You know what I mean? It's got like stuff right, right. on it. So I love a whole fish, by the way, people are afraid of it, but it's so good. The meat is so good up in the, in the fins and up, you know, um, Villa Capelli olive oil, uh, the dill, I take like a heaping teaspoon of the dill, mm -hmm. um, lemon juice and Dijon mustard, whisk it together. There's something about the dill brings all those flavors out. I just pour it on the salmon and then put it on the grill for like 10 minutes. Give me that again. And I got to write that down because, um, I've been doing different things. As a matter of fact, I've used you'll your, like this one because you have it. You have all the ingredients. I've used your dust on salmon. Yeah, it's great on salmon, too. Uh, and, it's totally and, and, different right, flavor so, profile. All right. So yeah. how, how much Villa Capelli would you say? Um, uh, let's say uh, let's say a quarter of a cup. That's four tablespoons. Quarter, cup. quarter, quarter of a cup. Maybe not even that much. Maybe three and tablespoons. I'm, I'm putting I'm putting how big is your cup. salmon filet? You, you don't need that much if you're just doing one filet. But if you're doing like a big side of them and like I do a nice slab because uh, okay, great. That's what I like to do. I need too. to bolus enough protein. Yeah, you got to bolus that shit. All right, so um, let's say a quarter cup of Villa Capelli. Okay. Juice of half a lemon. Half a lemon. Um, I do a squirt of um, let's say a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and I always tell you guys, don't forget to look at your ingredients on your Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard should not have sugar in it, and they try to put sugar in it, so make sure you get kind a kind that doesn't have sugar added. I have a good one. And then um, I do like a heaping teaspoon of the dill and then you whisk it all together. So it's nice and emulsified, pour it over the salmon. And then you literally put that skin on the grill. Teaspoon or tablespoon? Teaspoon, a heaping teaspoon is enough. Right. Okay. And I will, I'll put a little bit of salt and pepper on the salmon, but honestly, there's enough salt in the dill, but I know you like your salt. So make sure you sure. salt and pepper your salmon. Oh, I, you know, I'm going to salt it first. I, I, it's going to be all salted up. I, yeah. I salt everything. Um, so yeah, um, I, I, you've saved me because I, I, I thought maybe it's like, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm caramelizing that butter on both sides and is getting in with your, it's just something is doing to that meat and I just cannot get enough of it. I think about it all day and then I eat another steak at night and it, I'm quelled for another day and then I have it again. That, uh, that's all I've had since Serena's been gone. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the other night I had it and um, uh, here, I think, I, let me find that video. Here, I'll show you. The, uh, I'm going to send this to you, Anna, so you can watch it if I can find it. I'm just so glad that you're enjoying the spices because that's what they're meant for, just to be really versatile, put on stuff. I did. I put the taco seasoning and a little bit of salsa in a, in the Instant Pot with chicken thighs and pulverize those into like a really amazing taco meat, chicken chicken thigh taco meat. I'm, I'm going to use this on my Instagram at some point. Um, Great. Thank so you. you. You'll see. You'll see the piece. I mean, it was the best filet I've ever had. Um, oh. Let That's me know awesome. when it comes through. To okay. You. And by the way, I understand that the spices take a little more like education. It's not like, you know, mm. what the dill is and you know how to use it. Like it takes a little bit of time to go, Oh, I can use it in this way and that way. And I think too, when people, Oh, I got it. I think too, when people try to start cooking with stuff, they feel hesitant. Like they're going to mess something up. And I'm like, you're not just throw it on there. You're not going to mess it up. Yeah. Whoa. Play, play it on your end. Okay. In a previous video, you got to watch me cook this filet. Remember I did that plate is pretty. People always say, what do you have with your steak? Meaning what <laughs> meat jewelry I will have with it. Will it be broccoli, asparagus, cream spinach? Yeah, those are all options. But you know, there's an option that people don't think about. Look at your hand has meat fridge, stuff on it. <laughs> and I noticed that we had some fresh burrata. So why not? Nice piece of cheese to go with my meat. There's your meat jewelry. Boom. That, that, that's the whole meal right Ooh, there. bastard. 
I did that, Anna. I did that. So I did that. I ate that, and I may or may not have had an erection the entire time. I, I think you probably did. Yeah. And by the way, folks, go check out my Instagram. Um, I've been putting a lot of these up. The people seem to like it. Yep. And uh, we should do another Q&A, a live Q&A on Instagram. When, when you get back into town, we'll yeah. schedule that. Yeah, well, we could do those all the time. Um, and uh, then, then we can put them up. And every Tuesday at 530 Eastern, I do a live cooking demo. Boom. I, I pick something that may, you know, maybe a technique thing how to soft boil an egg, how to do salad dressings, how to do, you know, and just give some basics. And I think we've done wow. the show. Oh, we did it. Oh my God. We definitely did it. This is way you know, too long. Yeah. All right. So folks, you know what to do. Uh, Anna Vicino has got eat happy kitchen. I've been talking for the last 10 minutes about her barbecue dust that really saved me throughout this pandemic of Serena being gone. That's um, the true pandemic. It's, it's, it is the true pandemic. I, I, I and someone's taken the oxygen out of my lungs since that woman's been gone. Oh, um, and um, I've had the deal and I, I made a couple of taco dusty. Uh, you know, I made the taco dish that I make with no taco shells. Yes. Oh, Anna Vicino, Eat Happy Kitchen stuff. Go check out that. She's got the gravies. She calls them sauces. Go check it all out. <laughs> um, with me, you know what to do. We all go shopping on Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, please go to VinnyTotters.com. Click through the banner. It puts coal on the fire and it gets my train down the track and it doesn't cost you a dime extra. It just helps this show. And if you uh, would uh, like, we also have a super fan page and we appreciate when people go there and toss us a couple of bucks. Uh, it helps us keep the show free so that other people can find it.